So let's go back to where we first came in, in the room. So those are the two doors. So let's go... Yeah, we'll explore the room to the right. Try to scrape those walls and see what exactly is hiding each of these open doors. So that goes downstairs. Let's stay on the top level for now. <laughs> Hello. Door blown up. Okay. Half expecting enemies to load in there. But alright. Um, hey, what time is it? Quarter to four. Hello? Horowitz? I've heard Someone you on... Help over there. I heard you on the uh, the report in the Black Rock Quarry. Talking about a mermaid. Like a man down. Hello? I'm here. What happened to you? I got in a little scrap. <laughs> Name's Horowitz. I... Oh! Ah! Is he gonna be okay? Don't look at me like that. I'm fine. But Wells is still in there. You gotta get him out. Who's Wells? My squad mate. We were hunting a runaway altered item. We followed it down into the clocks. The clocks? A threshold. The Bureau sealed it up years back because of all the clocks. We, w we followed the altered item inside, but the way it was acting, we weren't ready. Me and Wells were the only ones to make it to the motel court. He was right behind me, but he never showed up on this side. I'll go find him. But first, you need to get to a medic. Mm -hmm. uh, Wells is the medic. Oh. Please, you gotta get him out of there. I'll be fine, really. Ruth can patch me up later. Fine. Okay. But sure. I'll be back for you. I <laughs> damn well hope so. <laughs> Please don't bleed out on me. The motel cord there. It should get you into the clocks. Sorry, the threshold. All right. Well, before we do that, can I open this? A matter of time. So, we have lots of different things to do. Um, do I have to keep this equipped to have the time track? I suppose I can just do the the motel stuff anyway, without having to track it. Uh, what mic do you use, Rob? So, the mic we are using is the newer uh, version. That is N-E-E-W-E-R. It's basically the most basic... XLR microphone that we could find. So you'll hear people recommend like the Shure SM57B or something like that or even a Rode Procaster kind of thing. But those are like pretty much top of the range XLR microphones. And it turns out your microphone quality depends quite a bit on the interface you use, not just the microphone itself. So we figured, eh, you know what, we're not like pro quality streamers just yet. Uh, we will just make it so we get the next step up in terms of our um, upgrade, uh, mic wise, because we used to use a blue snowball. And um, yeah, it's just like XLR microphones seem to deal a lot better quality wise than uh, other microphones via USB and so on. Uh, I'm getting confused. I thought I was finding other stuff around here, but I guess Horowitz above me. So, where did this go? Oh. All across America. Alright, well, it looks like I'm not getting attacked by any hiss anytime soon, so that's good. That gives me time to explore. Um... Yeah, I mean, there might be better quality versions of the same microphone we're using now, but I know newer as a brand, N-E-E-W-E-R. Uh, they seem to be fairly good for what you get. Oh, it's open now. Interesting. Uh, that might be where I need to go for Dylan. Let's do that. And yeah, the lapel microphones that we also use when it's both me and Pimsy, again, those are... They're not, like, the cheapest versions of the lapel mics, but they are, like, 
the basic quality. Um, so it's a step up, but it's not much of a step up, if that makes sense. The interface we use is a Behringer 404. So it's a UMC 404 HD uh, code, I think. Let's have a look. Uh, I can't see the other. It's called Euphoria UMC 404 HD. Um, yeah. There you go. All right, so let's have a look-see at what else we have. Pram procedures. Containment cell must be properly ventilated. Inhalation of the item smoke causes blank. Item is a baby carriage with a black shade and steel wire wheels. Left front wheel is slightly bent, causing a distinct wobble when pushed. Item produces smoke incessantly. Smoke density varies. Smoke is generated without apparent fire or ignition source. An incident in Paris in 1979 brought the pram to the attention of the Bureau. Smoke filled an antique store where the pram was being sold, killing the shop's owner. Detailed records of the event leading to the item's discovery were destroyed in an incident in the Panopticon. Interviews with living witnesses were reperformed at the order of the Archives and Records Chief. Okay. Was there anything else on that? Nope. And then multimedia, that should be the FBI, yeah, FBC reminder about pink documents. Okay, well, let's try this, shall we? One, two, three. Okay, so we're here. <laughs> so, last time we were in the Ocean View Motel, I got very confused about what the game needed from me. And it seems like it's all about uh, ringing this bell here. And there's a clock next to that bell, so... Uh, just gonna leave it. Yeah, just gonna check around a little bit. Come on, you need the most. You need the best mic, the most expensive one, the most expensive camera, the most expensive PC, the most expensive monitor, and all the consoles, the most expensive accessories, and the most expensive games. Yeah, not quite. Um, like at the end of the day, this is a hobby. It's not a job, so we can't necessarily uh, splash out as much as. Uh, we may want to, but yeah, so that's a, what? Okay, so it just resets. Do I have to stop the thing? That's at quarter two, okay. So I need it to be yeah, between 10 and 5, too. No, just quarter to two is fine. <laughs> so, yeah, between 10 and 5, two here. That's two o'clock. Hmm. Oh, quarter to four. Okay. So do I need to do it here? Ah, okay. And to wait. All right. Uh, imaginary idiot says, well, guys, I'm going to bed. Oh, thanks for joining in, Imaginary Idiot. Hope you had fun today, and uh, we'll see you again soon. So, 10 to 8, 10 to 8. Uh, okay, didn't quite line up. I feel like I should be able to properly stop the, the hands moving. And that's just gone 10. Aha. Uh -huh. I don't think this door has ever opened. No, no, this door has opened up. Never mind. Okay. Yep, just gone 10 to. Okay. One more ring. That's, yeah, definitely quarter to two. 
Let's try this again. Just wait for it to go all the way around. Uh, for a hobby, uh, I meant if it's for a job, then... Sorry, I just need to... Yeah, that was a bit too early, I guess. Is that right? Yep, yeah, okay. Got caught. I'm not doing that now. Come on. I'm in the Ocean View Motel, of all places. For a hobby, I meant if it's for a job, then you need to talk to NASA to rent a computer from them or build your own quantum computer. Isn't that supposed to be what uh, Google Stadia is all about? Like, you don't have to bother with all that stuff yourself because... They do it for you, essentially. So that is... Yeah, 5 past 6. And we have... Okay. 5 past 6, come on. Cool. Da -da. All right, sound effects. What has changed? Ah, we have a key. Thank you. That was much better than the last time I tried the puzzle in the Ocean View Motel. Off we go. The clocks. Find the missing medic. This Wells guy can't be far. You'd hope not. Uh, rent a computer, but you get the computer in your house. I mean, if it works out financially for some people, you could do that. But yeah, like, not having the control over the device yourself would feel a bit awkward to me. I think Google Stadia were like, hey, have a free pro membership on us. And it's just like, when am I ever going to ever do this? Not only are the games not appealing, but... The quality just isn't going to be great either. Those must be the clocks he was talking about. So many clocks. Quarantine has grinded to a stop yet again for me. I lack the motivation to do anything. Thus everything, even playing games on the Xbox, has gotten boring for me. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, um, Water Demon. Um, oh dear. I guess... What I would say about that is to try doing something new and outside of your comfort zone. Um, because the challenge of doing something new can stimulate you. So that you don't have to think about, oh, the thing that I usually do, I'm not interested in anymore. I mean, that's an, an understandable feeling to have, honestly, because... Quarantine sucks, basically. But I think doing something completely different to what you did before can get you out of a rut, maybe. And it can be something small and simple. Like, you don't have to worry too much about, like, what you want to do to, you know, feel better. But, um, yeah, just anything, I guess. Do some drawing, take up a sport. Oh, hello. I think he's dead. Yeah, that looks dead. I could shoot him in the face for you. Hiya. Oh, uh, before we talk to you, was there something else I picked up? No. Okay. Hello. Are you Wells? Your friend asked me to come looking for you. That must be Horowitz. Glad he got out. I stayed back to help the others get a shift job up at Clear. You tried. You can't blame yourself. That's enough. Horowitz needs your help now. How do we get out of here? We should head back through the threshold. We can look for other survivors as we go. We better hurry. Which way? Just follow the blood. <laughs> That's not concerning at all. Escort Wells back to Horowitz. Oh, it's an escort mission. I've never been any good at escort missions. Also, what's with all the clocks in the little boxes? Little chalk outlines for them. Maybe I'll practice drawing my weeb stuff again. Yeah, you know. Something you used to do that you didn't do 
haven't done for a while is a great way of, um, you know, getting back into the swing of something. And sometimes it's just, you know, you feel... Hello, teleporter. Sometimes you feel, like, just down for a bit, and there isn't really a way to get out of it, but it will pass. So just knowing that, okay, I'm not finding any enjoyment right now, but I will in the future, uh, can be a comforting thought every now and then. By the way, my new company told Reaper that at least we will be continuing in July and August to continue to work from 100% from home. And this month we will see how we're going to continue. It's good news. This used to be a regular office wing before the threshold manifested. The forces that claim there got a hold of someone's old clock and started duplicating it. Now the office is abandoned and its clock's all the way down. Clock's all the way down. Hey, look, it's Pope. First time in a video presentation. Who's this? Is this Ash? Probably not. They're not saying anything, though. Also, Pope changed her hair quite a bit. <laughs> oh, it's so very awkward. Oh, is that the guy that was trying to flirt? In a memo. That totally might be the guy that was trying to flirt in a memo of talking about Blackrock. <laughs> Sharing awkward glances. Cameraman, you're not doing a great job here. Oh, is this all behind the scenes? Oh, of course he loves his Newton Cradle. She hates it. Oh, he was trying to be funny. Okay. Uh, we will still be doing the summer schedule, which she means seven hours a day. Yeah, I mean, um, in Spain, they tend to have a, a different schedule when it's... I forget if it's when it's warmer or when it's colder, but you used to do five hours a day. Is that right, Reaper? So the seven hours a day schedule is a little bit more than what people do usually. What? I was holding launch. I'm not seeing a health bar on a uh, Wells, so I'm... Whoa. Need to worry about me first. So hopefully I don't have to worry about him um, dying on me. Wells? Okay, you're not Wells. You look very decomposed though, sir. Right. Uh, okay, he's testing the doors for me. Cool. He is a good AI partner. Open the gate for Wells. Okay. No files? Ooh. There's a file over there. I can definitely tell there's a file over there. All right. Uh, looks like we have to climb the wall of clocks. Uh, in some uh, some companies start work uh, only work in the mornings, but not five hours. Usually seven hours. So, okay, you my mistake. Here for an altered item? The anchor. Yeah. Anchor. Well, you, you work in the Federal Bureau of Control. Surely there are many things you've never seen anything like. Post box. 
Wait, did we find the post box thing? Case files. Here we go. So, a uh, Jasper post box. Agents arrived in the town of Jasper Crossing, Arizona, after the communications department intercepted multiple phone calls to local authorities regarding frozen people in the streets. Four of the five dispatched agents became paralyzed upon arriving at the scene. Additional assessment teams were dispatched. Variations of identification formulas were tried with ineffectual results. Agents resorted to using aerial photography to study the positioning of the paralyzed individuals. Soon after, agents discovered the event's epicenter to be the local post office. Unaffected agents cleared the area of all paralyzed civilians, animals, and bureau personnel before beginning to study the item. Agents deemed susceptible to the item were tasked with interviewing and reinforming the public away from the site. The item was soon placed on a transport vehicle manned by unaffected agents. Air travel had been deemed too dangerous given the item's effect. Numerous reports of temporary paralysis were reported by civilians along the troops route, truck's route from Arizona to New York. Isn't that really long? Arizona to New York? Isn't that like in the range of like a thousand miles. Hmm. Uh, usually two companies will compensate that hours during the rest of the year. And this one, no. We work 37.5 hours per week, except in the summer that we do 35. Oh, yeah. Seven hours a week, 35. And then 7.1, 7 7.2.5, 7 something like that. All right, carry on escorting. Oh, that's O'Neill. Shit. No one else got out. Don't take it too hard, my friend. You li you live and work in a dangerous place. You know, can't beat yourself up too much over it. Hello. Right. Before we go guns blazing, let's try. Well, never mind. Shooting down, shooting down. Nice. Had nowhere to dodge. Didn't quite get that guy up there. Try again. Also, what weapon is Wells using? It looks like a machine gun, but modified some way. And you're a mini boss. Oh god. Ooh, help. Help. Very useful distraction there, thank you. Any more? Some more guys on the top level, but I'm going to go down here and get the mods and the health. Alrighty. Hello! Goodbye. Hello! Goodbye. Okay. Music's calmed down. Good. I'm gonna switch off from Pierce. Um, I feel like Shatter would be more useful for me in the up close and personal parts. Uh, projectiles fired. Yeah, let's do plus four. Okay. Uh, the normal here is 40 hours per week, so we still do less hours than other companies. Hey, I mean, you know, you got to get that work-life balance, right? Um, I'm quite fortunate that the company I work for is very good about that as well. So they have um, different um, working hour contracts. But... Um, Hmm. Okay. I'll need to come deal with that altered item later. If I open the safe room now, Wells could get hurt. Go that way. So where is the safe room? Sorry, I got distracted by um, Wells talking. 
But yeah, this is definitely a come back later kind of issue. But yeah, uh, what I was saying about the company that I work for. So if you joined at a certain point of time, your working contract got grandfathered in. So basically, they upgraded people's contracts to not have to work the new working schedule, which is 37.5 hours. Um, and we love to type. Yeah, yeah, I got it. We need to get back to hard. But other people are still on the original one, which is 36 hours, if I'm uh, not mistaken. So yeah, works out uh, quite nicely for some people. Not so much for others, but for others, it's like it's the industry standard for uh, the country you work in. So. so this shelter stays shut. Okay. All right, we picked up something though. Uh, or didn't we? Yes, case files. Da -da. Refrigerator. Arctic Queen. Interview. Uh, 20th of November, 1974. Can you tell us why you left your building that day? I was running out to get eggs. There was that corner store on the 30th. Oh, on the 30th, not the 30th. That's why I left Michael there on his own. Knew I wouldn't be gone long. He was drawing at the table when I left. Had his crayons out. Happy. The building came down when I was a block away. I ran back, started digging. City workers found Mikey later beside the fridge. The drawings hadn't come off. Tons of bricks fall on it and those drawings are still there. How does that happen? He kept the refrigerator after the accident. Why? It still had his drawings. God must have kept them safe for a reason, right? I'd get home from work and stare at them all night. I was in a bad way back then. Why did you sell the fridge with your son's drawings still on it? They'd got stuck and they'd gotten stuck to it or something. I thought about cutting them off those magnets, but maybe it was better I didn't hold them to them, you know? Gotta move on, everyone says. What's my fridge got to do with the building collapse anyhow? End of relevant portion. Hmm. Reaper says, in this one, the company... Uh, there's flexible hours. We need to do 37.5 hours per week. When you start each day and when you leave is up to you with limits, obviously. Oh, yeah. Like, um, there's always a the thing of, hey, if you really wanted to, you could start work at 3 o'clock in the morning and finish incredibly early. But if your manager needs to talk to you, then you have to be online at a certain point in time of the day to say, yeah, we'll have that conversation. So... You know, if you're an extreme night owl, you could get all your work done late at night. But then, you know, you might as well follow the same schedule that other people are following because that means you can actually communicate with them and solve problems and so on. I mean, not that I particularly appreciate how the current working day is uh, set out. But, Took Harwood to the motel court and went back for the others. That was brave of you. I'm the man. It's my job. Very noble. Very noble. Uh, some limits on the project for Reaper. Uh, for example, when you do daily meetings like that, and you can't do too early in the morning or nor at night, not more than some hours per day. So I don't know the daily limit. Yeah, like I was saying, like. Um, you have to be sensible with it. Yeah. But it's nice they give you some flexibility. Work chat plane parts. Okay. Correspondence. Um, work chat plane parts. Here we go. Okay, Mr. Dead Dog, what do you think of this? You know that airplane we brought in, like the actual proper airplane? Guess who they made catalog every individual piece of that plane to be examined for suspected altered status? I had to count every bolt, nut, and piece of non-connected metal. And that's just the exterior of the damn thing. Do you know how many pieces of hardware it takes to make an airplane? I do. I do. Oh, what a poor fellow. Having to count each individual part of the plane. All right, well, let's look over this. All right. 